Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Normal difficulty, the Redux version. I'm your host, Colors Fade. It's episode 36 and we're ready to get under some more adventuring done. Um, let's see, who are we missing here? Ember? Oh yeah, we have to go rescue Ember. That's right. <laughs> okay, who do we want? Uh, probably Lan. Let's take his archery and his wolf with us. I did go in and do a couple of changes to my characters here. Fiora, our brown fur transmuter, got re-rolled uh, because I had given her a kukri as a weapon focus. And that was definitely the wrong thing to do with her. Because, like I said, there's enough unique kukris in the game that you could outfit two characters dual wielding them. But it takes a long time to get those. It's much better to have everybody using a different weapon. Uh, so I re-rolled her so she would be short swords. But also I re-rolled her so she would be a little more accurate. She's actually a tiefling in the picture you can see. And she's got the big dinosaur behind her. I love that somebody made this picture. So I made her a tiefling. Um, Brand for a transmuter elder set. And I gave her specialization or weapon focus in short swords. So that somebody would be using the good short swords that came through the game. So she's uh, a little bit. She's got a low wisdom. That's going to hurt her. But... I wanted it to be a little more role playing accurate. This person's over here. We got to go take these demons over here. So let's move them a little bit. We finally have, what do we have up here? Morale, banner of defense. Oh yeah, because we're, we're under siege. That's fine. All right. So what we want to do is where, where did Ember go? <clears throat> let's find that out. Companion quest. Return to Neathholm. Oh, yeah. So we have to do that. Uh, go to the Shrine of Baphomet. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So that's it. The Shrine of Baphomet. And that is... Baphomet Shrine is down there. So we got to go through here. We got a, a little bit of a journey to get down there. Okay. It's not letting me have that node. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not letting me have that one node, you turkeys. That's all right. <clears throat> we'll make it work. We'll head on down here and get her done. Everybody's getting very, very tired. Cancel stop. I want to rearrange people. Oh, and the other thing I did is I did go buy the big fancy weapon for her. This thing. I blew all 61,000 gold pieces on it and then had to sell a few more things. Um, this is great. Plus two evil outsider Bane Fauchard. Uh, if the wielder of this weapon is of good alignment, which she is because she's lawful good, then it grants them plus three on damage rolls against non-good creatures and it becomes good aligned by itself. So that's fantastic. Traveling Merchant. Uh, let's approach him. We so rarely see this guy. Well, he shows up quite a bit. It's funny when you meet him in Kingmaker, he starts to show up over and over and over again quite often. I, the thing is, I don't think he has anything that I actually want. Fine, free sample. What's the game? It's Scroll of Heal. That's nice. Okay, so uh, what does he have? Let's do by price descending. He's got... The Sigil of Destruction. This ring doubles the threat range of the wearer's kinetic blasts. Ooh. She's got a couple things for kinetic people. Braces of armor plus five. And four. Scrolls of Resurrection. Reach Metamagic Rod. But nothing. Oh, and diamonds. Yeah, diamonds are a girl's best friend. We're going to save up our money and buy some more of those. We only have a couple. I'm going to take some time here to sell this this and this since these things are never going to get used by any of my party and that and that long sword plus one that heavy crossbow of judgment might be the only thing i hang on to in case i need to use day run run for something how many diamonds do i have actually i have three Ooh, it's not a lot okay let's not die everybody oh, that's nice I'm gonna save it right there um i had one I had my first crash playing this game after 550 hours of playing it. I got done respecking Fiora. And then, uh, unfortunately, 
the game crashed. Oops, I forgot to set a rest person. A lookout person for the second half of our sleep there. Oops. No. Anyway, the game crashed when I went out into the main city after I left the inn. And I was like, what? No, 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 no. Don't make that happen. Someone on the road, get ready. Random encounter. Great, another random encounter. Oh, but we actually have, in a rare occurrence, we have a chance to buff before this random encounter. Although, I'm not sure this is a random encounter where we need to buff. Save the game right here. I don't think it is. It's just this guy. He's going to give us a clue. We're going to have to pass a knowledge check of some kind. Um, you know what? Let's go look real quick and see what people's numbers are. So this guy doesn't have any good knowledge. She has knowledge arcana, but it's only a little bit. Knowledge arcana, knowledge world would be me. She has really high knowledge arcana. He's going to have lore religion. Some knowledge world. That's good. And he has a high lore nature. I was looking because I wanted to see if there was anybody that I wanted to boost. He's got a high lore religion. Knowledge world. I'd probably like to boost his knowledge world. So let's go here. Put that on. He's going to do this. Knowledge world. Where would that be? Knowledge arcana. It's going to be the last one to check, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> All right. Let's see what we can do. The ghost. Well, would you look at that? An adventurer has arrived. You are searching for ancient knowledge, but the path to the heart of mystery can only be revealed to one most worthy. However, all it takes are a few small steps to set you on this path of discovery. So put yourself to the test. Answer my questions with the knowledge you possess and prove that you are worthy of possessing far greater knowledge. <clears throat> okay. The first question is not intended to be difficult. Tell me, to which tree does this leaf belong? This is an easy question for an elf to answer. This leaf of a lipenene, well, a lipenene tree, however you intend to pronounce that. He goes, oh, yes, all it takes is a little knowledge to begin your journey. By answering this question correctly, you have taken the next step toward acquiring great knowledge. The heart of mystery is now open to you. Solve its riddle, and you can continue forward. The secrets of creation will be revealed to the one most worthy. <coughs> I have been released. The demonic spell is gone. You gain scroll of hellfire, ray, right? Bowl string. Mass. Scroll of summon huge fire elemental. Nice. Listen to me, adventurer. I am a dead man forced to keep an eternal watch. I am a spirit bound by a spell. Magic forces me to say all this nonsense about knowledge and rewards, and it also prevents me from telling you who condemned me to this fate and what happens within the heart of mystery. However, there are other things that I can tell you. You'll have to hurry, though. I only have time to answer a single question before the cell spell sends me back to oblivion. Hmm. All right. Why would anyone go to all this trouble to find the one most worthy? What's the point of all these puzzles and riddles? I can't answer that question. I'm forced to be a part of this, but I do know the purpose of my enslavement. The power that binds me also wants adventurers to solve riddles. That is all I know. I'm supposed to tell adventurers that my questions are a test to see if they are worthy. In reality, however, they are nothing more than bait. They are meant to lure adventurers to a reward that awaits them in the heart of mystery. Yeah, so that's what I thought that was going to be. This is why I didn't buff. So, we'll be on our way. Each time he answers a question, it reveals a new location, I think. <clears throat> we already had the heart of mystery revealed, though. Trees and home. Okay, hold on. Did I do something with trees and home already? Yes, according to my notes, Trees and Home is done. Now, do we have all of those thingamabobs? We don't. Don't have any more. They would show up here. Okay, so there's no reason to go to the core of the riddle because we don't need to. Baphomet's Shrine. Let's go get Ember back. 
We must rescue our friend. Our sweet, innocent, little burned friend. Ember's actually a really cool character. I like her. Uh, let's do... Let, okay, so... The buffing. You, darling. Get your dinosaur out. <laughs> okay. She's got to get her spells done. Um, that's got to be over here. Over here. I don't like to lose that, but it can't be there. Doink, doink. Okay. That, that, that. Those are the special ones. And she's got a bunch of spells that we didn't rest for, so she won't be a lot of use. That's too bad. I was a dingbat. Oh, that's not what I meant to do, but that's all right. We'll get through this. We will do just fine here. Do that. There you go. Give yourself spell resistance just in case. Alright. You can do this to your puppers. Not princess. Yours, Two Face. No, you can do it to both of them. Because you got him. Aspect of the Falcon. You won't need bark skin. Owl's wisdom. I gotta get his spells rearranged too. Wow. Deadly aim. Don't worry about that. We're hardly ever gonna use that. Magic fang greater. Oh yeah, put that on here. Okay, what else do we have? <clears throat> okay, in case there's fire. Or acid. Electricity. Or cold. Eagle Splendor Mass. Do this to yourself. Alright. Get in there. I can't brown fur transmute this person this time, so we'll just pop that on her. Get that. You pops, hit us with this. And then I want you to do Eye of Boda. Vampiric Blade. Haste, everybody. Let's get out of here. See what's going on. So, oh, and let's save before we do that because we just did all that buffing, so I don't want to have to redo that. <coughs> right. Here it comes Mr. Dinosaur Hands over here. Wow, I love the way these guys look. The altar of Baphomet has been desecrated. We will clean it with the blood of the traitors. Look what you've done. Give them the girl and we'll be pardoned. Hands off, scoundrels. We won't give her to anyone, not to you or the demons. Please don't fight. You are all kind people. You don't need to hurt each other. Baphomet demands blood. Spare no one. Traitors and faithful alike will be sacrificed to our lord. Looks like the girl is right. If we want to survive, we'll have to fight together. Yep. So. Let's go. Ooh. Okay. Take out that guy first. Except for... Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to come over here. I want Two-Face over here. You're going to shoot that guy over here. You don't have a lot of... Abilities here. <clears throat> go take that thing out. You go take that thing out. You go hit that thing. Study target. Yes, we can study target. You're raging. That's good. You don't really need that. <laughs> oh, your spells are all messed up too. Oh, darling. Powerful stance is up. That's good. Yeah, let's do this. Get you fixed. Because I respect you a while ago. Stunning fist, which we will never use. Because you will never be stunned. Get over there and smack that thing. She's not... Her weapon is not showing up again. Okay, well. We'll just imagine it's invisible. Oh, 
when she did it. Critical hit 99. Baby. Gosh, I love that. Oh my goodness, look at her. <laughs> That's awesome, darling. Oh yeah, that took almost a half of its life off. <clears throat> Oh, you're dead, dude. You're so dead. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Decide the fate of the cultists. Breathing hard, a cultist knight wipes her blood-smeared sword on a tabard, depicting bath from its unholy seal. She looks around. It was a difficult fight, but by some miracle, none of the cultists perished. Looking back at Ember, she kneels in front of you. Knight Commander, we are guilty of treason, and we repent. We beg your mercy. Don't listen to her, Commander. Another knight, also wearing Baphomet's tabard, throws his weapon to the ground. Repentance? She was ready to give this girl to the demons until she realized there would be no mercy from them. We were all traitors and murderers. Henchmen of Baphomet's and soldiers in Thasgorod's army. You'd be better kill us on the spot. Don't say that. You protected me, didn't you? Maybe you wanted to do something bad, but then you changed your mind. Didn't you? The elf girl looks at you with her large, shining eyes. Please don't punish them too harshly. They didn't mean to hurt anyone. They were just deceived by the demons. Are you all right? Yes, just a little scared. Uh, all right, well, <clears throat> which of these knights protected you? All of them. Don't punish anyone. <laughs> oh, well, I've decided what I'm going to do with you. Mercy. All right. Do you think you can reform them? Fine. I believe in you. Let them be your congregation. I won't punish them. Commander, we can't be trusted. I can't even trust myself. Just a few hours ago, I was slaughtering the girl's congregation and was about to sacrifice her to Baphomet. But I believe in you. You do want to change, don't you? Thank you. We will try. Of course, after everything we've done, we can't remain knights of the orders we betrayed. We'll lay down our weapons and do the job you send us to do. <clears throat> deal you'll see they won't do anything bad shall we go absolutely we should go you're coming with me darling <clears throat> excellent what is this book templar's missive thasgarod has issued a new mission for our squad our orders are to disguise ourselves as locals search the mortal settlements and find the elven child named ember oh really well then and everybody got a level how awesome is that Oh, yes, and then we get this nice helmet. This is a very nice ember helmet. Very, very nice for her. It is a headband, charisma, plus four, deals damage through a spell to one or more enemies. She gets ten temporary hit points for three rounds. That is very nice for her, and that boosts her charisma. Oh, she's so cute with it on. It's perfect, ember. You're coming together, darling. So nice, and I need to check my pets here. Princess has Mighty Fist 2, and you don't. And I had one up here. Mighty Fist 1 and a Mighty Fist 2. Chonk. And you need a belt of strength. Chonk. There you go, buddy. All right. And you had a belt, yes. And you got a cloak. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Well, now it's level up time. We'll go grab all of this from these bozos. Attack. Attack. <laughs> Not really, but okay. Is there anything else on this map? It's a big map. Bismuth. It's a big map, but I don't think there's anything on here. We're still going to... Oh, no. I was rewarded for poking my head around. Okay. Well, in that case... We all need to rest, so... There's no harm here in firing off another haste to make use of this. Okay. We might even just rest here. Well, let's do the level up thing. <clears throat> let's do that. All right, this guy. He's our tower shield specialist, and at this level, he gets another burst barrier. He can screen himself from burst spells and effects while gaining the plus one bonus on reflex saves. So, and he gets a, a bonus combat feat. All right, so we're going to poke into dexterity. Believe it or not, he is a dex fighter. Mobility, perception. Greater weapon focus or weapon specialization. This adds to damage rolls. Um, 
so let's see. He's got combat mobility. You gain a plus four dodge bonus to armor class against attacks of opportunity cause when you move in or out of threat. And I don't care about that. Outflank is always nice because you're going to hit better. That's a, that's a plus two bonus, though. I don't think there's anything else there that he really needs. Back to back, if you were using her with... Uh, while you are flanked and adjacent to an ally with his feet, you receive a plus two circumstance bonus to AC against attacks of opportunity. This is a, this is a nice one to have for everybody that's going to be fighting on the front lines. Um, I almost want to take that, but I'm probably going to take greater weapon focus instead. Let's do that. He can also get weapon specialization later, but he can get it right now. She is our big honker. So Blood Rager Primal, she took five levels of that. She's go now going to go seven levels of two-handed fighter. She's got her one in the monk scaled fist and three in the sponsor. She's our offensive terrorizer. <clears throat> She's just so good at it. Love her. Great job, darling. She gets nothing special at that level. Lord Gelmir, our cleric, gets a poke in wisdom. Gets those. I, he doesn't really need a point in mobility. I probably should have gone for something else, but it doesn't really matter because he's your lore religion guy during resting. So, Ember. Okay, Ember is still a couple levels away. She's got to get level six spells, which she gets right now. Which is great. Oh, this is so fantastic. For her. And now I got to decide what to get for her here. Alright, so what I'm going to take here is protective luck. Now, misfortune would be probably my other choice. But here's the problem with misfortune. As far as the way I see it. A will save negates the hex. And a lot of critters are going to negate this hex. It's great. It causes an enemy for one round to have to reroll everything twice and take the lower result, which is fantastic. But you can kind of get the same thing in the opposite direction with protective luck. Your characters take everything, roll twice, and take the higher result. That doesn't this doesn't necessarily help you. Oh yeah. So what is whenever a creature is targeted by an effect that requires an attack roll, including weapon attacks, the attacker. So this this is cool because you cast this on your character, but it affects the enemy attacking them. So it does what I really want Misfortune to do, which is make an enemy have to roll twice and take the lower result to hit my tank. But I can do it this way, and I don't have to worry about a will save. So, this is quite useful. Um, and then she's got her spells. Let's see, what is what are we going to do here with her? Oh my god, she's got so many good spells and only so much room to do them. Um... She's got all the heal spells she needs. And I don't have to worry about raise dead because we had a cleric slay living. I always love it when that finally when that hits, but it so rarely hits. Uh, melee touch attack because the target takes twelve d six plus one per cast level points of damage. If the target's fortitude saving throw succeeds, it still takes three d six plus one. So it's going to take you know eighteen points of damage max. Uh, Subject might die from the damage even if it succeeds the saving throw. Stone to flesh is a good one to have. Uh, I think somebody will end up getting that later. Summon monster. That's I'm going to have people to take care of greater heroism and to spell magic. So I'm not so worried about those. I do want her to be able to summon. I need everybody to be able to summon as much as possible. And since she can't learn from scrolls, it makes sense that uh, we should give her some. There's just some fights later on where... Where you have to summon as many creatures as you possibly can. It's just it's just the way to she gets an extra one here. Ooh. What should we give her in this well, you know what? It's always good for everybody to have perception to, to see things. Um, do I have anybody that has athletics? Adrenir has four, Della has eight. Oh, really? I don't have anybody that has a lot of athletics, do I? Let's start poking points into that for her. So she has some. It's plus 10. She automatically becomes the best one. Uh, level 5 spells. She's got a couple. 
nothing too amazing. Cloud kill, always nice. Um, here's here's the teal though. Automatically kills and increase your level three or fewer hit dice. That's never going to happen because we're going to never see those characters anymore. All living creatures of four to six are slain unless it succeeds a fortitude save. Any living creature with more than six dice, six hit dice takes 1d4 points of constitution damage each round while in the cloud. Holding one's breath doesn't help. I like, that spell. I like to have a couple people that have that. Echolocation is good. She also needs to start getting all the summons. She's got the pit there. Greater invisibility. I'd like to have that from her. Let's do that. So that's going to be her spells and then me. And I'm doing the same thing. I am Eldritch Knighting my way up for the next 10 levels. Dexterity 26. Very nice. And we are here to spell Magic Greater. So level 6, we don't have any of our, any of our special spells that go with our... Uh, Special school, they show up green like this. You got to have at least one, otherwise, you're wasting spell slots there. But to spell magic greater is a great one to have. Uh, acid fog creatures moving through the acid fog move at half their normal speed and take minus two penalty to all melee attacks and melee damage rolls. Vapors prevent effective range weapon attacks, granting all creatures inside the fog plus eight bonus to AC against normal range attacks. It's nice. I wish I knew how to negate this though. Oh, I guess if I have acid resistance, does it negate it for me? Probably. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I wish dragon kind granted you all this without actually turning you into a dragon. I, I still want to be able to use my weapons. So there's heroism greater, which I need. Uh, hmm. All kinds of stuff. I need to go get some. I need to spend the money on the scroll scribing kits. So my brown fur transmuter and I can swap like she could get me cloud kill and. I could give her the things that I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab heroism because that's that's a really nice spell to have. All right, everybody. Let's rest. Do this thing. And Nightwatch, you're 15. And who else do we have in here? She's not going to be scribing skulls. So put her on there. Who's best at camouflaging? It's still me. Who's best at scroll scribing? It'd be her, but she doesn't have the ability. So we're not going to be scribing any schools right now. You still have the best religion. That's correct. All right. Onward. Potty banter doesn't happen when you don't have a lot of companions that are. <laughs> when you use a lot of mercs like I do, that's what happens. I kind of like that, actually. Not all of the party banter is very fun. It's oftentimes more annoying than fun. Like, I miss the party banter between Baldur's Gate 2. It did. It, there wasn't a lot, but it just was fun. Ivory Sanctum. Ooh, okay. We don't want to do that yet. We do want to go to Blackwater. Uh, we're going to have to go back and get... We're going to have to go back and get uh, the corruption down. Here we go. Demon Strikers. Let's take these guys out. I need to get one of those forts over there upgraded so I can teleport straight to it. Okay. Let's see. You're not... You're going to get him, him, and him. Oh, you're going to get... This is going to hurt. Oh, man. That's awesome. Get rid of the dretch. Because he can do the whole... The whole fog thing. Oh, nice. Look at you guys. You're just rocking and rolling. You're dead. You're dead, boys and girls. You're dead. Delamere. I bet she smells all that rotting flesh. Oof. Okay, these guys still. This is the problem over here, isn't it? Demon Ami. That guy throws his axe and kills all my archers. How many archers do I have now? 207. He'd probably kill my sorcerers. Hmm. 
gotta think about it. There's a big demon army up here. What's this? This gets eye for an eye. Wow, really? Okay. All right. Well, in that case, what we're gonna do is what I like to call uh, opening up the pathways. Just gonna connect everything. Crimson dust. Whoa, what's going on here? What is this? I think this is just a gather, isn't it? Oh, do you want to enter this location? No, because everybody's tired. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to recruit those. Now. Oh, look. We have a full group right there. Search. See if we can come up with some more Hell Knights. No, we can get some more clerics. That's probably a good idea. Oh, we can't recruit them because we can only fit three into a thing. Okay. You guys are going to come down here. Where did all those guys come from? They're champions. What's this crusader I'm here? Oh, there's more clerics there. Oh, holy cow. Okay. What are you guys? These are church guards. Came from something. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. Go back. It's the other guy. I want the church guards. Move them over here. Can you move into a group? You can. That's going to be fun. You need church guards with the skeletons. All right. Let's go recruit this then. Yeah, you guys can join down here. We'll wait for the, the main group to come up here. The Demon Strikers. All right. So let's rest. Close to our Abyssal Corruption Limit. That's the thing you got to get. You got to be able to get over to Blackwater without getting corrupt. Because you're going to need to rest there at least once. All right. What is this location? I don't remember this. This might be another one of those talk to the ghost and learn something about the Heart of Mystery locations. I can't remember. We're going to see, though. There's a lot of blood here falling from the sky. So before we do anything, I'm going to inch our way in here. Ooh, this doesn't look good. Huh. I'm thinking we need to buff. That's not what I want you to do. I just want you to do that. Give me this. Ember. When she, oh, wait a minute. Now, so now she's got this ability, which is fantastic. I got to get her spells, though. Let's see. Oh. Why? We rested. What happened to your spells, darling? <gasps> no, I forgot. Oh, no, you dummy. Okay. <sighs> oh, that's so sad. Okay. Hmm. All right. I don't, probably don't need Cloud Kill as much as I need some of these other things. Hmm. Oh, you ding dong. <laughs> Complete clown. Okay. Bestow curse. Greater invisibility. Be shape. We don't need. You become a medium leopard. I don't think so. Bestow curse. Let's see if we can hit that. Oh, man. That's tough. I didn't get those spells ready. You big dummy. Greater magic weapon. Heroism. Let's see down here. You need mirror image. Oh, somebody needs to have glitter dust ready. Just because occasionally, periodically, you kind of need it. And let's go animal aspect. Oh, wait a minute. And you have more spells. Good. Hmm. Fox is cunning. We got a couple of people who can use the uh, Eagle Splendor. Be nice. And then over here, yeah, you got those two. Enlarge person. Hurricane Blow, you could throw in a couple of people. True Stack if you needed it. All right, so you're going to be out of luck this turn. That's all right. I will do it myself. Boss, man, give us the... Give us the protections here. 
doink. Fire that off. Go for that one. I will do some blur on you just to help you out since you don't have it. This. This. Bodak. Vampire Blade. And a little hasty hasty. Alright, folks, let's hope that this is, uh. We got something over here. What do we have over here? Crusader. Oh, look! What is this thing? What is this thing here? Swiping at us. Crusader. What is it? <coughs> it's a sinful sinew. It's level 27. 314 hit points. 32 AC. It has a really low touch AC. Oh, man. Ember. Would you like to touch it? Target. Standard action. You make a range touch attack, darling. I know it's got some... Oh, it doesn't even have immunity to... Uh, Fire. Oh. Ember. Just torch this thing. There you go, darling. Do that again. What are you doing in the middle of the fight there, Gilmer? Back up. Back up. Get out of there. Oh my gosh, you don't even know how to get out of there. Do you, you clown? You're terrible. You had a ranged weapon. Stay away. You goof. How are we doing for pets? Okay, and that one needs a pet level up. Bully, bully. Poke. And you don't get anything special that turn, Gilmer. And she now gets this Hellfire Ray, which is awesome. It's an absolutely awesome spell. So she's got her level six spells. I'm just going to collect a bunch of stuff here. I don't know why they put that loot on the ground like that. I guess it's just for immersion the effect of it oh yes amulet of natural armor plus three change shirt of life in what do we got here that loot and then we got this ghost haha -ha! he flayed me flayed me alive like a rabbit ow the pain <laughs> what did i do to him oh that's funny and there's a uh, a shadow demon popped for us so is, is that because Ember's wearing that? No, because she didn't cast a level 6 spell. She's got this belt. Yeah, it does more damage to fire. And he's got this belt. He didn't cast a level 6 spell. Did he? Hmm. Let's see if there's anything else around here. Sometimes you get rewarded for looking for loot. Okay, yeah, we got that. That's a skinned leather cloak. Whenever the wearer lands a hit on an enemy the first time in a round, the enemy must pass a fortitude saving throw or be partially skinned. Those who fail the save become staggered and take two points of constitution damage, but it doesn't do any. And it's not, it's not protective at all. Hmm, okay. We got this chain shirt of life vim. Plus four profane bonus to AC against attacks of non-living creatures. Wow. Okay. Well, I don't have anybody that wears a chain shirt, really. So, I mean, she could, but her armor class should... Yeah, it drops considerably. <laughs> so, that's not going to happen. Um, I don't think it would... Yeah, he would not come out ahead on that. <laughs> and then, what do we have? Oh, yeah. Plus three natural armor... You've got half of a pair. I've got half of a pair. You can take it then because you're the other frontline fighter. So that seems fair to me. Whenever that lands a hit on an enemy for the first time, partially skinned, you know what? I like the idea of that being like on the dog or on this guy. Because these guys just die. They die and come back. So I really like the idea of him having that heck yeah buddy strength and dexterity yeah do that you get that make use of that hit him and make him staggered is that what it said staggered yeah stagger people I'd be all for that okay that's cool the flayer well, 
That was a little tiny map with a bunch of loot. No, well, not a bunch. A couple people. A couple pieces. A couple pieces. That's one thing I'd like to see Pathfinder change, though, is with the multi-classing and stuff like that. It makes it so... You need you need to multi-class one, and then two, by virtue of multi-classing, you end up having way higher, way higher armor class for not wearing armor, which is kind of counterintuitive. <laughs> All right. We will enter this. From a dead woman's hands, price of knowledge and spiritual bonds. What? What the what? That's one of the things I liked about the old Dungeons and Dragons rules is that if you got really cool play armor and you were a fighter, that was a good day. And if you were a rogue of some kind, you wanted to wear leather armor, you weren't going to be better off with no armor. <laughs> you weren't going to dip into monk for one level <laughs> to add your wisdom or charisma bonus to your AC. It's just, I just think it's silly. I think their system is a little bit sillier than it needs to be. All right, so what are we looking at for these these quests from a dead woman's hands? Talk to Socio. Okay, so I need to talk to Socio. And then know thy enemy. Explore the ivory sanctum. I'm going to do that. Visit the Blackwater Clan settlement. That's a big one, and I like that one. Tell the leader of the Order of the Flaming Fist about me, Mark. That I, we know where that is. Okay, we're going to be resting, so let's do this. She's over here. So we'll talk to her. Right away. Alright, Nystra. Alright. I found Mia Mare. She's on a cliff near Winter Sun. She's studying the runes on the bark of a petrified tree. So she's alive. Well, and absorbed in her research, as I thought. I will set off immediately. So we can go help with that. Socio. Where's Socio at? Right there. Oh, he's painting. He really is up there. Okay. We're going to have to walk that garrison. Walk up there. Well, so be it. Let's get up here and see the look. You can see that's funny. They've got his implements, but not him. Oh, that's hilarious. So, see. All right. Do you think? Did you think about what the hell I told you? Yes. Another dead end. I still know nothing. How could Trevor have parted with the shield? Hmm. You must believe in your brother. He gave away the shield. It means he had a good reason. I do believe it. I do, but. What could have made him part with our family relic? You know, it's not only the Hell Knights who told me the truth. Knight Tirabade refused to tell me anything about my brother's fate while I was serving in Canabras, but after these events she finally broke her silence and the things she told me. That he was a good fighter, but a terrible knight and an utterly worthless paladin. He became more and more cruel as time went on. He started caring more about destroying the enemy than protecting the innocent. He gushed over Prelate Helrin and his witch hunts. Eventually, the goddess's patience wore thin. When he beat up some poor fellow for blasphemy, Shailen took away Trevor's powers. That was a huge blow for him. He left the city asking lonely that his disgrace be kept secret from his family. That was why Erebeth didn't say anything earlier. Brother, my brother. But how? He's always been kind, merciful. Where could this cruelty have come from? Hmm. All right. Well, then, we'll have to learn more about your old brother. All right. Now, what do we have to do here? We also need to talk to Sila. Who's going to be down here with the horse. We have all this, all this stuff to do. We got to go talk to Zacharias and the Ziggurat. Run, 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 buddy. Oh, your haste wore off. That's okay. Here he comes, the commander of the Fifth Crusade. Where is Seal? Right there. It's good to see you. Get this. Janna, the one who ran away when we were attacked by demons, never went back to her unit. She was seen running toward Numeria. Looks like she deserted. 
Anyway, it's not what I wanted to talk about. Or not the only thing. Since our raid on the Hound Hearts camp, I've had this sinking feeling that I made a mistake. Dragging you into this, I mean. I should have known that a raid along the edge of the world wound wouldn't be easy. But mostly I was wrong about a lot of people. About Jenna, who lost her nerve and abandoned her friends. About Curl. I knew he was a thief, but I really thought he'd turn over a new leaf and deserved a little compassion and trust. And Elon. I thought we were kindred spirits. Friends through thick and thin. But it looks like I was wrong about him too. Don't lose your trust in people. Thank you, my friend. Alright, so... If I get a chance, I'll track down Jenna and see if I can talk some sense into her and find out why Curl did what he did. Can't stop thinking about what Elin told me in the end. I really have become more powerful than paladins who are far more experienced and selfless than me. There's something not right about that. A servant of Iomade should gain their powers through dedicated personal effort. It's the only way to make sure they'll use the power for good. Well, maybe. Alright, you are going to go over to Ziggurat. Let's go do that. Oh, not there on that rooftop. Just over here. <laughs> Just over here. We'll go see about this. The Ziggurat, he's just going to tell us that we're not evil enough. You are not evil enough. You must be more evil. You damn do-gooder, you. Perfect. Now that you are here, we can proceed. Remember this moment and accept the fate's greatest gift to you. You, my young student, are about to discover eternal life and power beyond imagining. Right here, right now. Go. Welcome to Immortality, Commander. Except it didn't work. Spectral fingers grasp your very being with immense power. Their predatory grip causes pain and odd numbness. You feel as though an unknown power is trying to rip your soul from your body. And it succeeds. You feel yourself drifting apart from your body. Your heartbeat slows, becoming distant and barely perceptible. Give yourself over to the power. Submitting to the spectral power, your spirit is smoothly released from its mortal flesh. Suddenly, the spectral power disappears. Everything around you freezes. You look at your own breathless body with unexpected curiosity, and yet, nothing happens. How odd. Precisely when the spirit was being expelled, I discovered a strange arcane connection between you and something or someone. The connection is strong, yet its nature utterly eludes me. Have you ever been enchanted? Personally blessed by a god? No, that's not it. Hmm. You are a rather complicated personality, aren't you, student? One thing is clear. Unless we ascertain what produced these spiritual bonds, I should not be able to perform the ritual without risking your life. If the ritual goes awry, we shall both suffer greatly. My oaths drain me of my power and reduce me to ash. Divination revealed to me a dark place, empty like an old broken shell, yet still resounding with the echoes of the great deeds of the past. This mysterious place lies to the southwest. Go there and find it. Trust your senses. You will recognize its trail when you come across it. That is not the only problem I see. It is possible it was to our good fortune that the ritual failed so completely. Your soul is not ready to embrace existence in the guise of undeath. It is flush with naive fantasies about good, mercy, and other miserable illusions that one preaches to the rabble. You must remedy this. Okay, what exactly is wrong? Your being was supposed to detach from your body effortlessly. Your ephemera is powerful, yet pliant. Reinforced by my magic, it would be safe long enough for me to complete its metamorphosis and place it in the phylactery. But this strange connection tightened and literally snatched your being from my hands. The cause may lie in your powers of divine origin, which you have displayed several times. Whatever it is, I shall not repeat the ritual until we ascertain what we are dealing with. The consequences could be dire for us both. We'll try again later. Only when we know all there is to know about it. 
I cannot risk your life, for my oaths will be broken if the ritual destroys you. And if that happens, then no matter what your fate may be, I shall envy it. Alright. Off we go. He wants you to go to somewhere, and I think it's the Ivory Sanctum. Is where you need to go. Guys, come on. Get over here. To the streets, forging a necromancer. So let's go to the Citadel and rest then. Well then, that stops that little bit of nonsense. And now we will figure out what to do next. Sila comes to you. I probably shouldn't come to you officially like an audience, but this is the only way to catch you these days. All right, so, oh yeah, she wants you to buy a present. Who are we buying the present for? For Elon. Great idea. I'd love to stretch my legs, so we'll go do that and create another giant problem in Master Sunhammer's shop. Nenyo, I'm amazed by your energy and zest for life. Every time I look at you, you're running around, noting something down, spouting one new idea after another. How do you manage it? I simply enjoy what I do. If life's not like that for you, perhaps you're in the wrong line of work. So saith all. <laughs> right? It's funny because my wife and I have arguments about this. Since we're raising children. Together. She, uh... She has a different take on things. Which I find a little disturbing her take is i don't care what you like to do get a job and then do your thing on the side and my take is figure out a way to take the thing that you love doing and make it your job so that you can enjoy your work <laughs> so we have a, a philosophical disagreement on that i think if you can ever figure out how to do something that you love and get paid for it you're uh, you're you're on your way to being happy more hours out of day than not. My wife is always like, yeah, but if you, if you take the thing that you love and make it your job, then it becomes work. And there's always parts of your job you're not going to like. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not the point. The point is you have to spend 40 to 80 hours a week working on something and getting paid for it. It's better to do something that you actually love and are passionate about instead of, oh my God, I, I hate having to go to work. That's the worst feeling in the world. That feeling of, I just don't want to go. And I hate this job. And I'm only doing it for a paycheck. That's just an awful feeling. It's much better if it's like, yeah, I love doing this thing and I know it's work, but everything is work, you know? So just make it something you love. Something that you can be excited to get up in the morning and do and know that, okay, I know this is work, but I like it. Like, I'm still trying to figure out how to be a writer I'm trying to get published. I'm trying to find an agent. I'm writing these books. I'm writing my second book right now and I really like it and I'm getting really good feedback on it. I'm excited by it. It's work. I have to sit down and say, oh man, I got to write another chapter today. And, and I know it's going to be work to do it and some days are harder than others. But even though there's some parts that are, that are sluggish, you know, it's still a thousand times better than than doing work that I hate. So, yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand my wife's philosophy. <laughs> I don't get it. It doesn't work for me. All right, let's do this. You're going to join up, and then you're going to join up. Very nice of you guys to join up like that. We're going to head on over to here. Actually, we're going to head on to right there. That first army is going to block us, and that's okay. We're going to take a look at this because we haven't taken a look at it in a long time. So, everything's really ready for the relic to be. We got a Bastion uh, upgrade. Okay, so which one are we going to upgrade here? Alright, so Villareth Ford's outpost is one of the ones that needs to be upgraded right here. That way you can deal with anything coming from this direction. We also need to go back down to Canavras. That's something that we have to do. Uh, so, Villareth Ford's outpost. Enter campaign manage sometimes the game glitches 
Oh, did we, have we not built anything here? Oh my gosh, really? I thought we built stuff there. Okay, so I need to make a note of that then. Wow. I thought I'd already built stuff there. Yeah, odd, because according to my Excel spreadsheet, I already had, so... Hmm. Alright, we'll build that and then we'll upgrade it. Fate of the... Yes, so here you get the fate of the Stone of Ghostly Pathways. Uh, oh, crap, it doesn't tell you what it is. I gotta go look then. Right, so there's a great Reddit thread where somebody says, I went through all of the relics so that you don't have to. Um, I definitely recommend bookmarking that. Find that thread and bookmark it. The ring is the one we want. There are three different versions of the ring, I think. And one of them makes it so that where if somebody in your party dies, it summons spiders to fight for you. I like it. It's just fun. <laughs> that's, so that's what we'll do that. An important inspection. A group of officials from Nerozin is on its way to Dresden. They want to inspect how well the crusade is organized. What kind of welcome should there be? Cold gives us leadership points. Lavish gives you finance in points increase by 30 Financing point, show things as they are. You get finance points, income increased by 30, and adds 3,000 diplomacy points. So why would you? Why would you not want to do that one? Finance points increase, increase by 30, adds 600 military expense. Show things as they are. Okay. Decrees. All right. So army decree, relics, the fate of the voracious jumble. What does that do? Yeah, so the fate of the voracious jumble is just a flail club. Um, Faultless daybreak is also lame, so I don't want to do any of these. Those are all dumb. Unscrupulous air requires three days to solve. It adds a whole bunch of points. It's three days to solve this, and it requires logistics. Yes, please just keep cranking out that stuff. Uh, Royal parade. This is a repeatable decree. I don't care about that. Rank up strengthening diplomatic connections. So that eliminates everything except this distributing provisions, which is a repeatable decree. We don't need it for our morale because our morale is already high. So we're going to do skip a day to do strengthening. That thing's going to come closer. And then we're going to see. Enchanting this, the reg, do that. And there's nothing else we can do, and it's two days. Okay. So we'll end here. This episode, we're going to go down to Canebris and, and deal with uh, the mongrels. Everybody, thanks for watching. As always, if you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a question and comment down below. Let me know if you're playing the game and having fun. Let me know what your favorite classes are. All that jazz. I'll see you all next time.